So why are chiral molecules so important? Well, let's consider some chiral drugs. As you see, this molecule has a sulfur stereogenic center. It's called Nexium, otherwise known as isoimiprazole magnesium. It's used to treat heartburn. And in 2013, its sales were worth more than $6 billion. So rather an important molecule. In fact, the second highest sale of a drug that year, making the preparation of a single enantiomer not an esoteric problem, but a $6 billion problem. Now, Nexium's IUPAC name is a little bit longer. What about this molecule? It's called naprofen. The S enantiomer is 28 times more active than the R enantiomer as a non steroidal anti inflammatory. Ephedrin is used as a bronchiodilator, yet its diastereomer, called pseudoephedrine, has a different effect as a decongestant. Lastly, we have the cautionary tale of L thalidomide that was developed for a treatment for morning sickness. Very regrettably, it was transformed in the liver into a metabolite that's a teratogen, causing serious deformities in the child. In the 1990s, the US Federal Drugs Administration revised their rules requiring that where there was a stereogenic center in a drug, both individual enantiomers must be separately tested, as well as a 50-50 mixture of the enantiomers called racemate. The cheaper to produce racemate form was only allowed as a drug if the enantiomers both had the same properties. Thus, the need for synthetic strategies that allowed the preparation of just a single desired enantiomer became very acute. Before this change in regulations, racemates made up 32% of drugs, with a singular enantiomer being only 25%. But afterwards, racemates were only 8% of drugs, while 58% were single enantiomers.